Hi, everybody, and welcome to English Digest. My name is Joe. Hi, I'm Stephanie. Today we're on our all English lecture unit. It's people, and we're talking about the greatest Muhammad Ali. I'm sure you've all heard of him. Maybe you're not that familiar with his career because he was a boxer、uh, in times、yeah. past,、uh, probably before a lot of you were born. But、uh, he was a very charismatic. Figure in the world, not just in boxing, but he had a big influence on、uh, American culture. I think、uh -huh. as well. He had a really big personality. My dad loved Muhammad Ali, so we talk about him in my house when we were growing up. And he was a funny guy. He's had some sad things happen to him as well. I should say this in the past tense. He had some sad things happen to him. He passed away just a couple months ago, and I remember thinking, "Wow." Um, I thought he was older than seventy four because he got Parkinson's disease so early that I just kept thinking, you know, he was probably sixty when he got Parkinson's, but he didn't. He got it when he was quite young.、Um, we have Parkinson's disease in my family, so it's a tough disease to watch someone suffer through. Yes, it is a tough one. Unfortunately, a lot of fighters or boxers they get these conditions because. Uh, they get hit in the head a lot in their profession, so、yeah. and that's what happened to Muhammad Ali. But we celebrate his life today on the program. It was a very full and well lived life. So let's go ahead and、uh, read through the article, and then Stephanie and I will be back to discuss it. The world was saddened in June 2016 when boxing legend Muhammad Ali passed away at 74. One of the greatest sporting figures in history, Ali was more than just a boxer. He was a charismatic speaker, an activist who stood up for his beliefs, and a proud man who bore his Parkinson's disease with dignity. Ali was born Cassius Clay. And under this name, he won both an Olympic gold medal and his first heavyweight world championship. Clay moved so quickly that his opponents could barely land a punch on him. He also talked up his fights with incredible self-confidence. At times, he accurately predicted the round in which he would win. However, Clay provoked controversy by joining an Islamic religious movement. Which improved the living conditions of African Americans and changing his name to Muhammad Ali. He also refused to be drafted for the Vietnam War, as it conflicted with his anti-war beliefs. As a result, he was stripped of his heavyweight boxing title, was almost sent to prison, and was banned from boxing for years. A tragedy for a fighter at the peak of his powers. When finally allowed back in the ring, he became a world champion twice more and fought in some of the most famous boxing matches in history. When he retired at age 40, Ali was already struggling with Parkinson's disease, which impaired his speech and movements. He was out of the spotlight until he lit the Olympic flame in the 1996 Olympics. When the world saw how badly this legendary fighter was affected, yet how bravely he faced it, his status rose again. A year later, he founded the Muhammad Ali Parkinson Center in order to help raise awareness of and find a cure for the disease. Ali was hailed as the greatest, and few can argue with this assessment. Okay, guys, let's take a look at the life of the greatest. Muhammad Ali, who died at the age of seventy-four just several months ago, we talk about people in sports oftentimes as being the greatest, like Michael Jordan in basketball. Some people think it's LeBron James in basketball, Wayne Gretzky in hockey. Yeah, and of course, I follow the Yankees, as most of the listeners know. And we had the greatest of all time at closer, who is、uh, Mariano Rivera. You'll often in sports guys see the、uh, acronym G O A T, and you might think, why are they calling that guy a goat, which is、uh, an animal? But it just stands for greatest of all time. Well, Muhammad Ali is the greatest of all time in boxing. At least most people believe that. I guess you could argue that, but most people say he is. 
Yeah, in boxing, a lot of guys will also call themselves that. Uh, nowadays, <laughs> yeah. there's a fighter by the name of Floyd Mayweather, mm -hmm. and uh, he had a record of 49 and 0. So he calls himself the G O A T, the GOAT, the greatest <laughs> of all time. But most people, if you ask, they'll say it's Muhammad Ali, and he definitely would have said that about himself yeah. as well. Well, the article starts off by saying the world was saddened in June 2016 when boxing legend Muhammad Ali passed away at 74. Yes, the world was saddened. It just means people felt sad at that time because they lost such an influential and iconic figure, yeah. not just in the world of sports, but the world of culture at large as well. We describe him as being a legend. In this case, a legend is somebody who is very influential, who did great things in their life that we will continue to talk about for a very, very long time. A legend can also refer to a story that is told and passed on from generation to generation, like uh, Chinese culture, for example, is filled with legends of the past, you know, of of generals who fought in wars and, uh, you know, later became deities or gods that are worshipped in temples. Those are legends, too. But Muhammad Ali is a legend from the world of sports. Yeah. I wanted to mention, we'll often have verbs like this, saddened, which started out as an adjective, and then you add an E-N to it, and it becomes a verb. I was thinking of some, in my head, I thought of brighten, if it's bright, but you want to make it even lighter, you want to brighten the room. Lengthen, length is how long something is to lengthen it, makes it longer. Hard, harden, soft, soften. And here you're seeing the same sort of pattern. We've taken sad and added that E-N to it to be saddened. So the world really was sad when he passed away. I remember that day and they were showing lots of clips online and on the news. I'd forgotten how fun he was to watch box. He would throw his punches so fast. It was kind of crazy. Something sting like a bee. What did he use Float to Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. <laughs> Yeah, he was hilarious. He really was entertaining. Most sports stars aren't that entertaining, but he was one entertaining fellow. Yeah, some sports stars, they can be very dry in interviews. Uh, they speak in cliches, yeah. as we say. They say, well, you know, we just tried our best and we worked as a team and there's no I in team and blah, blah, blah. 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 And it, they all kind of sound the same. Muhammad Ali, there was nobody who sounded like him. He never <laughs> gave the same interview twice. He never said the same quotes. He always had something fresh and exciting to uh -huh. say. And his fights were not boring no, at all. No. We say in the article here, one of the greatest sporting figures in history, Ali was more than just a boxer. So... We're not saying he was just good in boxing or just mm -hmm. known for his boxing. He was known throughout the sporting world. So even people who weren't necessarily boxing fans, they knew who he was. Right. And they would talk about him. They He would be in all the newspapers. All the uh, TV talk shows yeah. wanted to interview him because he was so charismatic. And uh, like I say, he never gave the same interview twice. You knew you were going to get something that would have people talking the next day if you were a TV talk show host or a writer for a newspaper or a magazine. Yeah. He just had a way of expressing himself that was very lively. He was also very confident. And Extremely some of it, confident. Yeah, some of his quotes were hilarious. He didn't lack confidence, we, we like to say in my family. Um, he was an activist. An activist is someone who stands up for a social cause. They support it. They talk about it publicly. And he was an activist who stood up for his beliefs. Sometimes he got himself into some trouble, at least with some Americans. Some Americans thought that what he supported was good, but some thought, hmm, I don't like that. But he was such a well-liked man that even in spite of some of his political positions, people still really enjoyed him. He was a proud man, oh yeah, who bore his Parkinson's disease with dignity. Parkinson's disease affects your mind, your brain, and what happens is you start shaking. You uh, lose control of your muscles, Yeah, basically. and it's really difficult to even move, walk. They've tried to find some cures for it. They're still working on it, but it's a tough one to endure or suffer through because it's tiring because your head's moving all the time and your arms and legs. It's very exhausting, but he bore his disease with dignity. 
to bear something like this just means you endure it well. You can get through it, and it says here he bore it with dignity, which just means you have an attitude of being quite serious about life. You have a lot of self-control, and you do things that would bring honor to you rather than, you know, laughter or doing something where people would not have any respect for you. A lot of people respect people who have a lot of dignity. So we know、uh, this fighter as Muhammad Ali, but、mm. Ali was actually born Cassius Clay. So he would change his name later on in his life, but his given name was Cassius Clay. We say Cassius. We're on Cassius, from Cassius Clay. But you know there are different pronunciations. Yeah. And under this name, he won both an Olympic gold medal and his first heavyweight world championship. So when he was a young fighter, he went to the Olympic Games. He won the gold medal. I think famously later, he actually threw that gold medal away. He threw it into a river. Uh, because he was not happy with the state of America, he thought that、uh, he w- he was African American.、Uh, in case you don't know, and he believed that、uh, the government and the people at large had turned their backs on the African American community. This was at the height of the civil rights movement when、mm-hmm. African Americans were pushing for equal treatment、uh, under the eyes of the law and、yeah. just from society in general. And so, at that time, he took his gold medal and he threw it away.、Mm-hmm. I believe they later gave him another one after、yeah. uh, later on in his life. But under the name Cassius Clay, he won his first heavyweight world championship. Of course, boxing. They break it down into different weight classes.、Mm-hmm. If you're 200 pounds, you don't fight against a 150 pound person. <laughs> that would be unfair. That would be over very quickly, probably. <laughs> so he fought at heavy weight, which、yeah. is、uh, over 205 pounds, I believe, is the the weight class. And he won a championship. If you win a championship, it means、uh, you beat the best. There are、yeah. championships in all sports. In、uh, baseball, of course, we have the World Series. That championship,、mm-hmm. uh, so the top two teams end up playing each other. In ice hockey, it's the Stanley Cup. But in boxing, they fight for these heavyweight championship belts, and there are all these different organizations for boxing. There's not just one pro boxing thing. There's all kinds of them. There's the WBA, WBC, like World Boxing Championship,、uh-huh. World Boxing Association. It gets kind of confusing because. You'll have multiple champions, like multiple heavyweight champions, for all these different weight classes at the same time. At I, the same time, yeah, I always thought that was confusing. And then they talk about, well, this champion from this organization should fight that champion from that、yeah. organization to unify, to bring together the championships. Yes, but it rarely happens because、yeah. then they're fighting and they have to give up their belt, and nobody wants that. Because if you're the champion, you're making a lot of money every time you fight. You fight. Yes, it's true. It's true. We call the money that. That they earn from some of these bouts. It's called a boxing match. A bout, b o u t, is also used. We call that money that they have potential to earn the purse. Like the purse is something mostly we use to talk about the bad girls carry around on their shoulder, you know, with your wallet in it. But sometimes, if you see purse, it's referring to the money that can be won in some sort of competition, especially in boxing. For some reason, we're going to continue talking about his boxing career. But first, guys, we're going to take a break. Although this break will not include our Chinese teacher, we'll be right back to talk about Muhammad Ali a little bit more in English. We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the program, everybody. My name is Joe. I'm here with Stephanie in the studio today, and we're talking about the greatest Muhammad Ali, who sadly passed away in June、mm. of this year at the age of 74. We learned that he was actually born Cassius Clay. He would、mm-hmm. change his name later, but he won his first. Heavyweight World Championship under the name Cassius Clay. He won a gold medal under that name, and、uh, that's where his career really started to take off. We're talking about his style now. Clay moved so quickly that his opponents could barely land a punch on him. Yes, when he was a young fighter. He was just so speedy. He was、mm-hmm. as fast as lightning, yeah. And he didn't get hit a lot. He could go into a fight, and he would knock the other guy out, but the other guy would barely be able 
to hit him. He moved so quickly that his opponents could barely land a punch on him. So quickly that we're just saying he was、uh, so fast that something would happen. In he was this quick、case. on his feet. Yeah, he was quick on his feet. He had、uh, really fast feet, which is important in boxing. So、yeah. you can move around the ring. Quickly without getting hit, your <laughs> opponent in、uh, some sort of、uh, match or contest is the person that you are playing against or competing against. So, when you're boxing, of course, you're just fighting one other person、uh, in the ring, and those opponents, the people he was fighting, could barely land、yeah. a punch. If you barely do something, it means you、uh, have difficulty doing something or you don't do something a lot. For example, you could say, "Well, I barely go to the gym. I don't go to the gym often." For example. So when we say they barely landed a punch, a punch is when you hit somebody with your fist. Yeah. In boxing, of course, as you probably know, they don't hit each other with bare fists. It's not just、uh, their knuckles. They have boxing gloves on or boxing mitts. Sometimes、mm-hmm. they are referred to. You put them over your hands. You actually wrap your hands with a、uh, cloth. Have you done this before? I used to box. Oh,、uh, actually, a little bit.、So. Oh, cool. So you actually you wrap your hands with.、Uh, they're just actually called wraps. They're、oh, they're、oh, just、really? cloth, and you wrap them around your knuckles,、uh, those bones in your hand to protect the bones. You put some tape then over the wraps, and then you put the gloves over top of all of that, and it's just to. Pad your fists; otherwise, they would just break their hands all the time. Without that, really. Without that, you would break your hands because、oh. actually, the head, the skull, is is very hard.、Ugh. Actually, the top of the skull is the hardest bone in the human body. So, if you hit that with a bare fist, you will break your hand. Oh, ow! So that's a common injury, actually, for <laughs> boxers. So that's why they wear these boxing gloves or、mm. boxing mitts when they are throwing punches.、Yeah. It's it's to protect the head somewhat, although brain injuries are very common. Oh yeah, in boxing, it it is quite a brutal sport. Injuries are, are commonplace and. People often wind up sadly with conditions such as Parkinson's disease if they fight too long or if they get hit too often、uh, mm-hmm. in the head. That's what happened to、uh, Cassius Clay, aka Muhammad Ali, unfortunately. Yeah, when you have a head injury like that, it's referred to as a concussion. And it's really bad for you if you get a couple of concussions in a row. It can really cause permanent damage to you, so you have to be careful. That's why a lot of our American football players, a lot of them, have brain damage after they retire. You get hit too often. Now, here it says he also talked up his fights. If you talk something up, guys, it just means you talk about it very positively. You're kind of promoting something. Maybe you want to go and do something with your friends, and they're like, "Yeah, no, it doesn't sound very good." But you start talking it up to try to convince them that they want to go. That's what talking up something is. He really did speak with a lot of self confidence. Incredible self confidence. I don't think I've ever heard anybody who really had more self confidence than Muhammad Ali. He was just fun to listen to. At times, he accurately predicted the round in which he would win. In boxing, if it's a championship bout or match, there are twelve rounds. If it's not a non-championship boxing match, it's ten. In his day, sometimes the championship bouts were fifteen. Woo! Fifteen rounds. Wow! Long fights. Those are long fights. So, can you imagine trying to stand? On your feet after being hit that much, so he could actually accurately means correctly. He was right when he'd say, "I think I'll be able to win in the ninth round." But he would say it in like really colorful ways. Sometimes he'd say, <laughs>、yeah. "He'll be done in one," or "He'll hit the floor in four." Or, <laughs> after five, he won't be alive. Yeah, he liked to rhyme a lot, didn't he? Yeah, I forgot yeah. that. Oh, he was so cute. Well, it says here in the next paragraph he also provoked controversy by joining an Islamic religious movement, which helped improve the living conditions of African Americans. And that's when he changed his name from Cassius Clay to Muhammad Ali. Now, if you provoke something, you kind of get it started. If two kids were fighting in school, especially in elementary school, two boys maybe would fight sometimes. 
the teacher would always say, "Okay, what happened?" And one kid might say, "He provoked me." So if you provoke something, you start it. You're the one who's doing something to bother somebody else, and they're responding. Now, controversy just means there's some sort of topic that people really have strong opinions on, and they disagree with each other. There was some controversy when he joined an Islamic religious movement. Yes, that's right. It was called the Nation of Islam, and it was controversial in its day. He was hanging around with、uh, historical figures like、uh, Malcolm X,、uh, famous civil、mm. rights activists, and、sure. uh, people from the Islamic group at the time. He also refused to be drafted for the Vietnam War. War as it conflicted with his anti-war beliefs. Now, at this time, America, the United States, was embroiled in a war in Vietnam.、Mm. They were ostensibly going over there to fight communism, and they were drafting people, draw, drafting young men into the army. If you were drafted, it meant that the government sent you a notice and said. Now you're going to be a soldier. You had no choice. You had no choice. You had to go. You could not. Well, you had. There were ways you could refuse, but it was complicated and difficult. And some people who didn't want to go, they would actually run away to Canada, to your country.、Uh, they would flee and change their names、yeah. and things like that. We called them draft dodgers. Yeah, draft dodgers because they were dodging the draft. Muhammad Ali didn't dodge the draft, but he just said, "I'm not going.、Mm-hmm. I refuse." To go because it conflicted with his anti-war beliefs. If something conflicts with something, it's opposed to something. It's、mm-hmm. against it. He was against this war. He would say things like, "Why should I go halfway around the world to kill other poor people,、mm. and things like that?" And he thought, "Well, I have my own fight at home for equal rights for African Americans." So he refused. He would not go, and he got dragged into court for that. They、mm-hmm. wanted to send him to jail. And as a result, he was stripped of his heavyweight title. If you're stripped of something, something is taken away from you. So, the boxing associations they were furious、mm. with him because people were not supposed to refuse the draft. They were just supposed to go and not ask questions about it. They took away his titles. He was almost sent to prison. He almost、mm, actually went、wow. to jail, and he was prepared to do that. He said, "Well, if I have to go to jail, I'll go to jail." I'll go, yeah. And he was banned from boxing for years. If you're banned from something, it means you're not allowed to go somewhere or you're not allowed to do something. So his profession, his job,、yeah. was taken away. And this was especially a tragedy because he was at the peak of his powers. At the peak means at the top. Peak can refer to like the top of a mountain, but if you say somebody's at the peak of their powers, it just means they're the best they're ever going to be. Perhaps after that time, they won't be as good. And for fighters, this is very important because when you're young, you know you're the fastest you're、yeah. ever going to be. You're the strongest. You don't, you don't get faster. You don't get faster as you get older. <laughs> unfortunately,、no. I wish that was the case. That would be great. But you don't. You、no. just kind of get older and slower and、yeah. less powerful. So boxers really have to cash in when they're young. Well, when they finally allowed him back in the ring, that's what we call that area where they box. It's the boxing ring. He became a world champion twice more and fought in some of the most famous boxing matches in history. Those were very, very fun. Well, when he retired at forty. Ali was already struggling with Parkinson's disease, which impaired his speech and movements. It's kind of sad, you know. The two things he was most famous for: his ability to move quickly and his lively way of expressing himself were taken away through this disease. If your movements, something about you is impaired, it means it's no longer functioning very well. It's less than perfect. There's something about that that is disabled. It's just not functioning well. So he was out of the spotlight then until he lit the Olympic flame in the 1996 Olympics. I remember that moment.、It、was sad to see him in that shape. I'll be honest. But if you're in the spotlight, guys, it just means you're getting a lot of public attention, a lot of publicity, and he stayed out of the spotlight. Then, after he retired,、uh, as he was struggling and suffering with Parkinson's disease, until that moment. Where he was invited to light the Olympic flame、uh, in 1996, kind of cool. Yes, I believe those games were in Atlanta,、mm. in、uh, Georgia. So in the southern United States, which was the area that he was actually from. So it was it was a big moment for、yeah. him to be there to light the torch.、Uh, he was from Louisville, Kentucky, actually. 
Now, when the world saw how badly this legendary fighter was affected, yet how bravely he faced it, his status rose again. So, when he was lighting the torch, they saw how Parkinson's had affected him.、Uh, he was shaking、yeah. because that's what the disease. Causes you to do, and it was he was he was shaking quite badly, but he was brave. He faced it well. He was still a proud man. He、mm-hmm. was just、uh, affected by this disease a little bit, so his status rose again. Your status is the way that people view you. It's the level that you're at in a certain respect,、mm-hmm. uh, how you're viewed within society. So this caused people to view him in a good light. They viewed him positively again. They hadn't seen him in public in、oh, quite、yeah. a while. He, a long time. Like we say, he'd been out of the spotlight, so people hadn't seen him. But now he was back, and people just thought he was very brave to come out and show this disease and say, "Yes, I'm sick. I'm affected by Parkinson's disease, but." I'm still out here doing the things that、uh, the things that I do. I think it was good for people to see that even if you have Parkinson's disease, you can still participate in life. I think it helped. It helped people、uh, be more aware of Parkinson's, and more people donated money, so that helped too. A year later, he founded the Muhammad Ali Parkinson Center in order to help raise awareness of and find a cure for the disease. So, like some of the celebrities who suffer from some of these bad diseases, he used his celebrity to help raise money and awareness, so that they can hopefully find a cure for this disease someday. Now, Ali was hailed as the greatest, and few can argue with this assessment. If you're hailed as something, it just means people. Call you something, they、uh, give you some sort of name or title, and they do so very enthusiastically. So he's hailed as the greatest. People call him that, and few can argue with this assessment. An assessment is when people evaluate your skills、yeah. or how you are as a person、uh, at work. Sometimes you will have an assessment with your manager, and they'll say, "Okay, you're good at this, this, and this. You could improve in this area." But we're talking about an assessment of Muhammad Ali. Most people say, "Yeah, he's the greatest of all time,、uh, not just in boxing, but、uh, in the world of sports in general." So that brings us to the end of the program、yeah. today. We hope you've enjoyed learning about the exciting life of Muhammad Ali. There's a lot more to it. So、uh, if you want to, if you're into sports, into boxing, look him up. He led a very fascinating and full life. Well, that's all the time we have for today for English Digest. I'm Joe. I'm Stephanie. Goodbye. Bye.